Hey everyone, it's uh, Joe and Isaias from the Automator. Ian, I learned something really, really interesting and I wanted Isaias to explain it to me here again, just because I, I get it, but I didn't quite understand like that this was a thing because I use my function library a lot and I use includes a yes. lot yes. and I didn't understand the different implications in what he's going to show here. So right. Isaias, why don't you show us what this little nugget of, of good to know information. I think that you can see my screen right away, right? So notice that here we do have bracket notation, right? For certain files. Now, what that means is that AutoHotKey is going to find those in very specific folders on your computer automatically. And you do not have to specify the .ahk Right, but if you do, it breaks that. it. Right. 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 Yeah, it does. So it is just something that um, you have to keep in mind. If you use the bracket notation, you do not have to specify the .ahk extension. Now, the folders that the script is going to be looking for are three folders. First, wherever AutoHotKey is installed, well, there might be a lib folder there. To clarify, it's where the, the executable one that you're running it from, right? Because you might have it multiple places wherever that executable actually is. That's right, gonna... so so wherever, so whatever AutoHotKey executable, the location for that is, usually yeah. that's where, wherever you install. I know, I know, I'm just saying, because- But it I might change, it multiple yes. Multiple places. Right, 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 right. So, but in this case, let's go with a simple one. Whatever that executable is installed or whatever it was run from, right next to it, it might be a lib folder. And whatever is in there might be read automatically by AutoHotKey, just to check right. if you meant a file that is here. If it is not there, it would go to your documents folder, uh, AutoHotKey folder, lib. So it is gonna look for documents, AutoHotKey, lib. Whatever is in here is also automatically read, okay? So this is something uh, right now on my script, I could just go ahead and say include, and I would just say here, um, API call, right? Like this, and that would include the file. What file is that? It didn't find it on the AutoHotKey executable. It found it in the AutoHotKey lib, and there is this API call folder, which is the first part that I put here, that's the folder, and then the API call.ahk, that's the second part that is the file that I didn't specify the AHK on. So now that we know that, the last folder that the script looks for is right next to the script. So if your script is called autohotkeytoolkit.ahk, right next to it, there might be a lib folder that contains all the scripts that you might include. And that's exactly what I'm doing here. I'm just using that as uh, my my SC is that one here, sc.hk, and it's inside my lib folder. Now script object is in a folder. That's why it is, I just specify the folder and inside the folder is the script object. That's why it is different than the others because that one is inside a folder. Now, there was a person who we gave a script with, uh, to and it broke and he said like, it was not including, but when I tried this, it worked, he says. Now, the, what was going on in there? If you want to, right now, if I try to run the script now, it's going to give me an error because that file doesn't exist. So I'm going to do that. And it should tell me, let me go ahead and try it. it. Should give me that the file script cannot be opened, right? But in his case, it was working. Why? Well, Somehow, and maybe he didn't even notice that he did this, he grabbed that folder and put it outside of the lib folder. He put it right next to the script. Mm -hmm. So now, AutoHotKey is right next to a folder called script object. Yeah, and okay. now in there, there is this. Now, this makes sense. Now that makes sense. Because right. now, right next to my script is a folder it's not yeah. inside the yeah. lib folder. It's not inside the lib folder. So now I'm giving it a specific path. Now, if I run this, it should work just fine. You see, I didn't get any errors. The script is working fine because, so somehow that folder got moved is what happens. 
Right. And he can tell me, no, I didn't move anything. I can tell you 100% right. it has to be moved because right. if not, it's not going to work. If I move that inside the leaf folder, I'm going to have an issue. Now, as soon as I put the brackets, out of hotkey knows that right. it's going to search for that folder inside the leaf folder. That's right. what is going on. So think about the brackets as just out of hotkey saying lib slash script object, right? slash script object dot ahk well so I, I was going to say the so brackets is just like removing the brackets is just like part. selling lib right that, that's it, it, it's, it's removing not only removing the leap part is also removing the ahk part yeah i know but so it's removing two things out of it you're just doing this and doing that and that's what the brackets really mean just look for a lib folder that contains any ahk file that is inside that folder. Or, you know, in the case of the other ones that I have in here, they're not inside a folder. So they must be, they might be directly on the leap folder. That's, the That's what's going on. Right, exactly. Yeah, me, if, again, if I was uh, playing God, I, <laughs> I would have left uh, the extension. I mean, I like uh -huh. the LIB thing overall. I would have just not dropped out the extension just because it, to me, it causes uh, you, 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 this is something interesting, and I'm going to show you why that I like that. Yeah. So, I might have a file here, and whenever you start programming big programs, you're going to have something like headers.h.hk. Now, the headers file, or you can put any, num any name, but here's the thing usually, what we do is that we have um, very a, a list of variables global variables like this that each of them has a specific uh value to it and that's the only thing that that file does it just defines a bunch of variables that later in my code i could just use and say if uh path equals you're all good you know this makes clean code because i could understand what is going on right so i need that global variable set up somewhere and i don't want my main script to have all of those things so i just create a file that is a header file that just has those variables okay that's that's what is going on now i want to put the dot h extension on it to let know that this is not functions. This is not, uh, uh, this is not, it, it is just a file that has a bunch of definitions. That's what it is. Now on my script here, I could just say include headers.h. Notice that I'm not referring to the AHK on it, right? The AHK is automatically appended to it. But now I could see that file and automatically know that that is a header file that doesn't contain functions it doesn't contain anything it just contains a bunch of variables i could safely just comment that out and my script uh it's not like i lost functionality i just lost some variables that's yeah, what's going on but right uncomment that out move one carrot to the left to the left so here and put and the add hk, HK. yep is that really that much cleaner? I mean, it is longer, but here's the thing. I think this works anyways. You can put the HK in there. No, I, no I, it breaks it. Let me double check. I, and if I remove, oh, because it's going to treat the HK as something, it's going to append it to it, right? Yeah, yeah right. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so anyway, yeah, it's not in general, like said, it is not a big deal, but basically what is going on is that- It's just something you have to remember. Of it, like it is something that. for people who have coded in C, in, yeah, C, in okay. C++, we find that a little bit appealing because we know what that means. For people yeah. who are not coders in that sense, then it, right. like, why, why would you do that? Yeah, that's, what it, that's what's going well, on. Yeah, yeah, and again, I mean, I get the whole point is to, to help streamline that, but it, I, I find a lot of people find it confusing. Of I know when I first learned it, do mm -hmm. I put in the dot ahk or not here? You know, no. So so if you're using the carets, don't put it because it uh, it will put it automatically for you. Right. That's it. Right. 
unless your file is named, you know, blah, blah. Basically, HK. if you, if you want to use it, if you want to use it, if you want to put it yourself, yeah. you can safely do this. So I could just put this here. You can just safely do that, dot HK. And it's the same thing. Sure. Yeah. That's the same thing. Well, I so typically feel, just, yeah. Right. If you I feel mean, more comfortable better, with that, that's right. then just do that. Right. I often just put the full path because it's it's easy for me and I'm and again I'm not sharing stuff with other people so it's perfectly fine but yeah when you go to share that with people it becomes very problematic when you have the full path. Remember that you can always go ahead and use an include with just a folder name and now every single next include is going to have that appended on the front. So if you feel more comfortable just adding the leap folder here right yeah that's interesting right and then you just put the hk nice. for each of your things now, that's not an issue either so you can do that too now does does this work the same way in in auto hotkey as other stuff does is on line 96 add a new one after after 95 96, anywhere 95, in here right whatever here. Get a return now change add a different in lib you know blah right like that now going forward, the ones beneath that yes. are going to be that one. Exactly. Okay. So cool. you can at any point on your script specify the folder that you're referring to now. And any include that is below that gets that appended by default. So okay. yeah, you can do that. And then in the meantime, you can in the middle, you can just switch it. And now right. all the other files get this appended in, in front of it. So yes, it's totally doable. Um, if you feel more comfortable, then yeah, just go ahead and do that. That's not an issue. For me, I just don't want to specify a leap folder. I, if you just put the, the, the carets around it, it just does it for me. But the only side effect is that it also appends the outer hard key. Think of it as the left caret is the library folder and the right caret is the AHK. As soon as well, you I, think about it, yeah. that that's <laughs> it just appends sure. that to... Well, to I, I, I thought you were going to say, yeah, Joe, you could do that. Just go into your actual files and add a dot ahk at the near the end, so it's dot ahk dot ahk. <laughs> no, know, no, 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 <laughs> no, no, no. Come on, <laughs> that's a lot. That, that's way too much for, for whatever you do. But that's it. You know, um, once you understand how the library folders work, then it is amazingly because now, um, right now, for testing purposes, I could just include a folder. API call, API call. And I don't have to have that file inside my project. And when I save the file and give it to somebody, they do not have to have it. It's going to break, but yeah, I can do that because it automatically pull it from my user's library, which is in the documents. It yeah. did automatically, right? But um, it is doable. It, you, you can do that. It's not a big deal. So yeah, after you understand how it works, it's great. Yeah, and, and again, the, the functionality in version one, you don't like, but it's gone in version two. You don't even have to, if you're putting it in one of those LIB folders, you don't even have to use the includes, but then you don't remember that you actually had things in your library that you use and you go to share them. And I would, I would, I would say like, yeah, if you like to share code, just right. compile it just compile it into an executable well, and send it and it will have all the includes if well, uh, you don't want to compile it the best is to put it on the lib folder right next to the script whatever it needs yeah oh but you mean like you're, you're saying the one not using the include at all right oh right so right so that api call like you could just use it and that's it right Right. Now it is gonna break. I assure you, it's gonna break well, right away. <laughs> well, when you share it, when you share it, of course, you. yeah. When yeah. you share it, it breaks. Now, just to um, to bring it back home, we we just reposted our HK hotkey string lookup tool, mm -hmm. and we compiled it to get around this thing where hey, our audience for that tool is very new to auto hotkey, right? At least the majority of them are. 
And what will happen is they'll do like this actually was the case where I think it was this, this script. Yeah, yeah, it, wasn't, it wasn't this. They, they unpacked it. They unzipped it. They moved stuff around where it shouldn't have been, unfortunately. And then it broke. And then it, it breaks the script right so, away. Which breaks, is what you right. just said. Hey, you know what? If you're going to be able to compile it and just give them that and you're good to go, right? Especially and, when it is people who do not deal too much with our hotkey. Right. Usually the projects, you just give the binary form to people who are going to consume your product and the sources to somebody who knows how to work with the sources. If you are a person who know how to work with the sources, you will fix this right away because you know that the include is right. goes this way and this, that's it. But if it is somebody who doesn't know, then just give him a binary. You're going to be fine. It's going to be good. <laughs> yeah, except for getting, making sure they can actually download it. It can be a little problematic, but uh, <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Thanks, man. Bye. You're welcome.